أعوذ بالله من الشيطان الرجيم بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم. And the funny thing is, uh, when I look historically, there was another situation in which a particular class of people, a particular demographic, all agreed on what they needed to do to exploit another demographic. There was no electronic communication at that time. There were no electronics at that time. Um, but in, yet and still, there was a way that they were able to come to a consensus about the things that work and that don't work so that they could exploit another demographic. Now, that was the planner class of the Southern United States. Um, so to give a brief context, the planner class was like 5% of the, uh, the Caucasian population in the United States. Um, the majority of slave owners were not planters, but the majority of slaves were owned by planters because they owned the most human beings, period. They were the top 5% in terms of wealth. They had the most land. Um, and now most of the planter class also uh, had jobs as attorneys back then, and they were also legislators, either U.S. legislators in D.C. or they were state legislators uh, for whatever state in which they resided. But what I'm getting at is that they were legislators. And oftentimes you went from a state legislature to being um, a senator or representative in Washington, D.C., sent by your state legislature. So what wound up being the case was that this planner class would meet every legislative session, statewide or nationwide. That's when they met. So they had a, they were a tight knit circle and they traded notes as to what worked to control the population that they owned, our ancestors. And so this is why there was no electronic communication needed. They didn't even have to really write letters to each other and leave a written trail of this. They just simply, when they met in person um, and they would take breaks and go to the restaurants near these, these state houses or near the uh, Capitol Hill back then, this is when they were able to talk about these things. And the information just simply spread. And within a few years, the top 5% of, of uh, throughout the South knows what to do and knows what not to do in order to control who it is that they own. Well, it's a similar situation with these uh, with the Western ladies. Now, they don't necessarily have to sit up here and use a lot of electronic communication, but they have that and they can use it, but they don't rely on that. The hair salons, any other spaces they go to in which we men are unwelcome are the places in which they sit up and they trade these notes and they're telling each other to do this. And so we men, we're trying to figure this out by ourselves. Dad will just, you know, dad's uh, general wisdom is, well, the women, you're never going to understand them. That's dad's wisdom. That's the most he can tell his son. Uh, uh, but when they're talking, mom is giving her daughter game. Auntie is giving her niece game. Big sister's giving little sister game. Despite how much they don't like each other, they are giving each other game. And the only purpose that that serves is to put us and we men in the bad position in which we are and to cut off any access to a better position with them. It doesn't serve any other purpose. And so... Um, in a nutshell, this is part of why it is that I've said that they're at war with us in the West. And you and I know that the Western Muslim is no less at war with us than the disbelieving woman of the West is. Maybe more so sometimes, but certainly no less. So in actuality, yes, they need to learn to surpass the other species we call man's best friend. They need to learn that. But what they're being taught is to actually do the opposite, to behave like the felines. Uh, try to pull the men in by not showing much interest. And unfortunately, that winds up backfiring on them. And then when they're shown less interest, they begin to value the ones that don't show interest in them. They begin to value the men more that value them less. And of course, that's going to create a situation in which they really believe that we men aren't, any, aren't worth anything. Because what they want in a man, of course, you know, the height, muscles, money, uh, preferably the fame to go with it, all that social approval. What, the things we know they want are the same things that um, that uh, uh, they look at us and they say, well, if this man that's showing interest in me had the things that I want him to have, then he would be disinterested. Therefore, this is a problem with them as as a gender. The, the gender is flawed. They're viewing us this way because they have actually been told to behave like the felines, try to rope them in by not showing interest, to remain aloof. It's going to reel them in. And then when that and, and that actually affects their own psyche. And then, of course, that doesn't work with us because our nature is more of one, our nature is more one of. Well, if you show me loyalty and you, you're considerate of me, then I'm with you, too, because I can afford to be. I can I can do 
uh, nice things to you, be loyal to you, protect you. I can do these things um, and I don't have an incentive to betray you because I can't even trust the one for whom um, somebody would think I have an interest in betraying you. I can't trust them because they're not doing for me what you're doing for me. You they don't understand that we've actually been trained to do what it is that they were expected to do in the beginning. What's funny is that uh, I heard uh, on another podcast, some guys were talking about if you want to know what women want, don't ask women because scientifically they don't know what they want. Uh, when they did the, 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 the stimulus, uh, not the check, but the stimulus probes they did on women, they would say, uh, women would, they would ask a woman, what do you like? What do you like in this? What do you like in that? And they would show them images of the things they said they like. Then they'll show them images that were the total opposite of what they said they like. I like a man that's kind, have a, have a soft tone, but then you'll see a guy talking, you know, he's barking really loud and he's aggressive and, and they were more stimulated by that than they were by the other thing. So uh, the summary was don't ask women don't when women tell you what they want, don't believe them. Uh, women want men. Women need men. Okay. Women need men. It just as others have said that if men uh, abandon the women, we will live to our natural life term. If women abandon men, they would die off early, you know, because they didn't, they didn't build the country. They can't repair the infrastructure. None of that. Okay. So, uh, and even for the men that can't do so, uh, there's enough men to take up their their slack. But for the women that can do so, it's not enough of them to sustain the whole. So again, men would live their natural term. Women would die off early. And this is the issue of asking women, what do you want? They don't know what they want. You know, so it's like, are you hungry? They say, yes. What would you like to eat? Uh, I don't know. What do you think? That's the first thing they'll do. OK, that's the first thing they'll do. Uh, my, my wife has said, uh, I got a taste for this. And I would say, well, I was thinking about this. They say, oh, yeah, let's do that. You know, so it's natural for a woman to acquiesce you know, to follow a man's lead. So when we ask them, what do you want? We should already know what they want. They want us. They want us at our best and they don't want us at our simpest, simpest if that's a word. Uh, they don't want us at, as our beta is, if that's a word. They want us at our alpha, meaning that uh, even if you're not an alpha around men, you have to be an alpha around your woman. Just as we know, uh, there are guys, you know, when guys are in a space, we're like wolves. We know who's the top wolf, right? You can kind of sense that. Uh, if, if you have a group of friends, you know the one that uh, you wouldn't mind fighting if y'all got into fisticuffs. Uh, versus the one that, uh, <laughs> subhanAllah, that uh, you wouldn't want to fight, you know, because us wolves or us, you know, silverback gorillas, we know each other. Us black man lions, we know each other. So, but when it comes to a woman, a woman, I I've known women that were really impressed by their husbands. Oh, my husband is so brave. My husband is this. Now, around the company of men, we, we kind of had a different opinion because we know this dude, this dude is weak. You know what I'm saying? Or this dude is not as strong as she would. Uh, think he is so women are naturally impressed by men being men uh the problem today is that they're selling us uh distorted and expired goods telling us that oh a man is a man is this and a man is that and you'll see the memes a real man would never hit a woman well on the police report they called him a man you know a real man mm -hmm. wouldn't do this well uh it's, it says on the application male you know, so they try to redefine what's man. And if this is coming from women, it, it, it's flawed. It's definitely flawed because like, like we were discussing last night when we had a meeting, we we're discussing how every time you ask a woman what constitutes a real man, she'll only define what she wants in a man, you know, or if you ask her, what do men want? She'll start to define what she wants in a man. Maybe. And I mentioned, I say, maybe the first one she mentions is something that men want. But after that, she'll start telling you what a woman wants. So women are not, women can't raise men. They can't raise boys to be men. So therefore, they should not be advising men on how to be a man. But, but if they want to become our best friends, they're going to have to do the dog ears. 
A dog can hear from long distances. It can hear uh, the minute of sounds, the most minute of sounds. So therefore, they got to put their ears up and start listening to men. Then they'll get a clue. And that is how they can move closer to becoming our best friends. Um, when that when the man said you don't find out what they want by asking them, um, that's the reason why it is that I go as hard on them as I do in my uh, on my own platform. Uh, it's not hatred, but it is simply that in a nutshell, we men have to stop being boys and grow into full manhood psychologically and physically in order to be considered by them. We have not turned around and done and, and required the same thing of them. And what I mean is uh, I, I don't necessarily mean that choosing a young adult woman is wrong and that it makes you a sicko like people say automatically. Um, I do say that it is oftentimes men selling themselves short because we know that women don't really mature faster than men in the West or the East. That's not a, an, an automatic given. They're just more domestically experienced. Yeah, domestically experienced because they play house at a young age. That's really what goes on. So um, they're just they're, they're, they're just more experienced in certain things or rather, like I said, they've been given the game by the women in their family. Uh, regarding men. So that's where they were ahead. They're not necessarily more mature. You can tell by the way they communicate. They're not more mature than we are. But what's bad about about the way that they are is that number one, they can't say what it is that they want. When they're young and they don't know, they won't articulate it. But when they are uh, older and they know more of what they want, then they just lie about it. So they, they don't they don't come clean about what it is that they want, even when they're aware of what they used to lie about before. That's number one. The second thing is naturally. Yeah, they do want men and that's fine. They, they, you would expect that. However, uh, their ability to assess manhood in the West is deeply flawed. It's OK that they don't want uh, the so-called uh, uh, that they don't want the Omega. And the omega is actually different from the beta because uh, we all agree what it means or we have some idea what it means to be alpha or we understand the same thing when a speaker says alpha. Um, but beta is actually second in command. The truth be told, really, in the Greek alphabet, uh, if, if the alpha is the general of an army, then the betas uh, would be the, the, the captains and the major generals and the lieutenants underneath. Yeah. The ones that would take orders from the generals and then give the orders to everybody. Those are the betas. That's still pretty high. The Omegas would be the privates, the foot soldiers. They're still in training or they just got out of it. They never got the first strike. And that's usually it's you, you notice that in these male hierarchies, the actual rank of a man is it tends to be based on experience and training, not just things that are arbitrary and beyond their control. Mm -hmm. um, the only thing the only thing is that, of course, when you were born is beyond your control. And outside of that, you determine relatively speaking within those limits, how much you can rise or fall in your rank. And you can you can be demoted when you start to perform terribly before you get fired. And women are not assessing these things objectively. What they're doing is they're sitting up and they're saying, well, he has to be the man that that, that orders other men around. OK, now you're getting down to a small percentage and all these women want that same small percentage yeah. and then uh, they can want it. OK, fine. But can they admit to themselves that the numbers simply don't allow all of them to get these same few men? Unless, of course, all the kids are going to be related, in which case they can't be with anybody without incest. So they're, they're not thinking logically. And what they're doing is they're trying to use nature to justify this up to uh, mate selection system that they have. When, in fact, if you look at, at, at the closest species to this, the bighorn sheep, of course, you, it's tournament mating. You've got males button heads and only the winner has the so-called rights to mate with all of these females. While these males are button heads, there's some females that sneak off with other males that are not participating and they mate with them. If it were not for some of them doing this sneaking and undermining that system, all of the next generation would be siblings. And that's, that's never good for any population mm. of, of mammals, reptiles, or anything else for that, even plants. So it's because of some of these, these females doing exactly what they are not socially supposed to do that their species has not died off. And what I'm seeing is that women with the most intellect of any female species or, or, or the females of any species on the planet with the most intellect are still taking the absolute worst guidance they could possibly take. When their intellect is right and their instincts are wrong, they follow the instincts. When their instincts are right and their intellect is wrong, then they follow the intellect. They, whichever one is worse, they follow it. 
and well, we have to stop and think hear. if some true but then how is it always how is it that what they want to hear is always the absolute worst who's whispering in their ear to get them to choose the worst of the two every single time and why are they listening to that whisper well it's the d word we men are not I making use, that i use delusion a lot because you that, that's like the the overwhelming theme for a lot of their choices a lot of their statements a lot of their posts a lot of their memes you know a lot of their verbiage is uh delusion it's delusional um uh, I, I mean if i if i tell a woman you know the more clothes you put in this washing machine the cleaner they get you know i'm a washing machine salesman and she'll say oh the more clothes you put in there the cleaner it'll get and that makes sense to her you know but i was told that by a saleswoman oh th th this this front loader is is wonderful even the more clothes you put in it the cleaner the clothes get and I was like, I said, man, who sent me this person? You know, like, like, when did that become strategy? See, see, a woman, they, they, they gravitate toward fantasy and delusion, and then when they become salespeople or what have you, or or looking for a man, they, you know, they they promote that, you know, or, or they, they'll they'll expel that, you know, uh, that that delusion, you know, and that fantasy, and this this is a a, a really a huge problem because. Uh, if you look at the shows that they love and stuff like that, it's all about fantasy. The books, you know, the novels that they read, it's about fantasy. I had one wife; she wouldn't read a, she wouldn't read any hadith, she wouldn't read any Quran, but she loved those those Negro romance novels, you know. And it was always in the fantasy, you know. It was always surrounded around fantasy, but real life stuff like Quran and Sunnah, you know, it didn't tickle her fancy. But like I said, if, if you want to sell a woman a, a fantasy, you know. Uh, tell her I own this you know I got this much money even if you don't have it I don't know if you know this but they were trying to pass a law in New York I think it was they were trying to uh, and a woman was actually pushing this law the law is if a woman sleeps, sleeps with you under false pretense it was almost like rape meaning that you could go to jail mm -hmm. or be fined for telling a woman something she wants to hear that's not really reality so basically, they're going to try to change the law to protect women from themselves. So if I tell a woman I make five hundred thousand dollars a year and she sleeps with me, they say if 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 it comes to find out that I don't make that much, I can be charged with rape or something like that. Now, I, I, but but you might think I'm lying. This is actually a real law that they're trying to push. It hasn't passed legislation yet, but they're trying to push this law. They're trying to save them from their own fantasy. You know, and if you slept with a man because you thought he earned five hundred thousand, you are high. You are high dollar prostitute. That's what you are. But no one wants to say prostitution, but they want to. They want to get the man for. Uh, there, there's there's a law called robbery by conversation, uh, where prosecutors can actually try to gaffle you up, uh, because you gave someone a sad story or a story that was too good to be true, and it, and it caused them to give you some money or so. Uh, so forth, but but the uh, the premise was false, you know, of why why the reason they gave you this money, you know, your your child was not going to be taken from you, your 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 wife was not being held for ransom by the mafia, you know, or whatever story you gave, they call it robbery by conversation, but they they're they're passed, they're trying to pass this law in New York to protect these women from their own delusional fantasy tendencies, you know, and it's really really sad. Uh, because we call that, you know, uh, macking or I don't, I don't know what they call it. Even if a man is exaggerating his income and so on and so forth, why is a woman gravitating toward that? You know, and how can she be a victim of rape, you know, or what have you, uh, be because uh, he told her exactly what she wanted to hear. But advertisers are not going to be charged, you know, advertisers are not going to be charged and other aspects of, of, of life are not going to be charged with but they want to really tax us men, you know, for a woman's uh, inclination to fantasy. <laughs> Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. 